Hello everybody, this is Francesco from Fattoria di Montemaggio and this is the Wine Thursday. Welcome back to a new live stream, to a new episode of, uh, uh, again, the Wine Thursday. And uh, today we are coming back with the, the old uh, format, with the old type of format. And it will be uh, a little wine discussion where, of course, I'm going to, uh, you know, um, present you some, some, some specific argument. And the, today's argument, of course, as we announced uh, in the post today, it will be super task. And we're going to talk about the super task. And so we are going to clarify, first of all, what it is a super task and what kind of wines are um, you know, consider a super task. And, and also we're going to cover a little bit the history of the development of super task as wines. But uh, of course, as always, we give uh, one minute uh, uh, to, to, to all the people that want to join us, of course, and uh, I, of course, uh, probably some of you noticed that last uh, Thursday we had our first live in Italian. We had a very special guest that uh, I would like to thank uh, again, which was uh, Davide D'Alterio. And uh, he, uh, of course, he's uh, one of the uh, best sommelier of Italy and he's the sommelier of Enoteca Pinchiori. So, Davide, if you listen to this uh, live, thank you again. And, of course, we, we have also this new format where... Of course, we are going uh, every uh, second week, basically, to 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 um, you know um, interview some some. And we're going to interview some 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 professional figure of the wine world. Uh, but of course, even the, the normal, the standard wine Thursday will will you know uh, continue to, to to exist like today. And again, it will be a wine discussion about super task and today. So we're going to cover in general this very. Uh, I would say controversial, controversial. I'm sorry, argument. So first of all, what does super Tuscan mean? What what kind of wines could be defined as uh, super Tuscan? Uh, actually, before we clarify this aspect, we need to give uh, you know some kind of like uh, definition of what uh, it's. Uh, what, what, I mean, what kind of wine could be considered? Super Tuscan. So Super Tuscan are revolutionary wines, let's say, born from an innovative and brilliant idea. And uh, uh, this is probably the, the most frequent definition that you can find uh, in general uh, on, you know, especially if you look for that on the internet, it's, it's very, um, you know, it's very um, frequent that people define Super Tuscan with, with this sentence. But then what does the word you know super task can mean it's uh, in the beginning they wanted you know to 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 uh, use this word for some kind of wine that has a, of course first of all super superior quality that we're producing in Toscana uh, but let's say that name uh, super Tuscan was coined in the early uh, 1980s in order to generally describe a red wine produced in Tuscany uh, in a broader meaning, we tend to consider a super task and all the wines produced in Tuscany that for any reason, geographical area, grape yield, uh, vinification, and or aging methods, uh, do not fall within the production disciplinary of the area where they belong, you know? And so this kind of general start, this kind of uh, general wine started, you know, to be more and more popular. And of course they wanted to, to let's say, create a word, um, a label, if you want, to define those kind of wines wine that don't have disciplinary at the end of the day. So um, these are wines that do not meet the guidelines of a DOC, so denomination of origin controlled, or not even like a DOCG, so denomination of origin control and guaranteed, and they're totally, uh, let's say, unregulated. They're produced using the traditional Sangiovese uh, plus uh, uh, red grapes that are not native or typically of uh, Italy, such as international varieties like Cabernet, Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, Syrah, Cabernet Franc. So there's more, you know, also capacity of expression for the winemaker in terms of his own idea and this kind of uh, in this kind of wines, uh, you know, we always said that uh, in Montemaggio we are strong. Um, we strongly believe in, uh, you know, uh, the importance of tradition when it comes about Chianti Classico and all the Chianti Classico's levels. But when it comes about, you know, uh, 
uh, the, the, especially the EGT wines, you know, the, the wines uh, uh, at the Indication Geographica Typica, Indication Geographical Typical, we really prefer, you know, a much more, uh, let's say, modern and open approach, which is, in my opinion, it could be probably the best, um, the best option that you have as a winemaker to, you know, express your, your own idea, your own um, philosophy of, uh, of, um, uh, um, as, a, as a, wine, a winery, of course, and that's the beauty of the, those kind of wines. Um, so how were the first Super Tuscan born? This is something that it's very also like, um, you know, um, important, it's very important to go back, you know, in terms of uh, history and we need to analyze a little bit better what happened literally uh, at the beginning of 1900 because, you know, we can say that in that specific moment, in the beginning of 1900, we had, you know, the first Super Tuscan uh, Antelitram. Uh, Super Tuscan Antelitram, um, it, says, it could be considered uh, a wine that was uh, created around 1940 uh, by Mar uh, Marquis uh, Mario and Cesare Rocchetta, a lover uh, of resources and French wine as, uh, as well, uh, that decided to realize his dream of making a wine of breed, let's say, just like uh, his horses. And uh, uh, after uh, having noticed, you know, the geographical and climatic similarities between the area of Maremma and Toscana and one of the uh, Gravé uh, in Bordeaux, he imported some clones of Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. And uh, these grapes uh, were uh, planted in Tenusa San Guido. And after uh, a careful and uh, attentive cultivation, we, we should mention that, that, of course, in 1944, we're ready to uh, you create the first bottle of Sassicaia, of course, and probably every, every single one of you at least once in his life uh, have heard the word Sassicaia, the name Sassicaia. And at the beginning, the wines was exclusively produced uh, for family consumption, believe it or not, uh, whereas the first harvest uh, to be commercialized arrived uh, only in uh, uh, 1968. So you know, we're talking about, um, you know, um, many years later, and you know, it's. Um, but in general, when 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 you create a new wine, when you create something that it's literally uh, new and um, it's also, you know, um, very important to take your time to develop a product that really is speak in a specific way, you know, that let's speak the territory, that let's speak your own idea of uh, wine making, and really that's what they did in, you know, the best the best way, I would say. So, um, of course, um, the first Super Tuscan that, you know, clearly was, you know, labeled as Super Tuscan is uh, Antinori Signalello, and inspired by this example, Mark is uh, Piero Antinori, which was a uh, cousin of Mario Cisa della Rocchetta, whose family had been producing wine for more than 600 years, uh, decided to go further and change the vinification process of his Chianti, adding Sangiovese, uh, which is our, of course, typical grape for all the Chianti wines and Chianti Lassius wine. And uh, we can say also it's probably the most emblematic uh, Italian grape, or at least the most emblematic uh, Italian variety of the central part of Italy. Anyway, he decided to do an assemblage, a blend with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Uh, Tos was born Tignatello, which can be considered the first real super task, and with Italy uh, uh, in its pedigree, let's say, as Sassicaia was, you know, a blend of. French grapes only, you know. Uh, that's the that's that's the uh, that's the idea. Anyway, you can see in a very in, in a very long time they started to um, create new different uh, ideas also when making even um, when it comes about wines that we can you know consider um, that that fall in the same category. That's 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 the beauty of it. So the definitive consecration of the genre, of the Super Tuscan genre, took place when the famous American critic, wine critic, of course, Robert Parkett, in a blind tasting, gave 100 uh, out of 100 points to Sassicaia in 1985. From that moment, 
uh, on the idea of producing wines in Tuscany with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot uh, Syrah was not considered blasphemic anymore. Uh, on the contrary, it opened the way to a new history in Tuscan and Italian enology. These great wines, as the uh, the use grapes not allowed in the disciplinary, could not be classified, of course, as a DOC or nor as DOCG. Uh, in the beginning, they were simply uh, labeled as stable wine, a definition typically reserved to the lowest quality wines in the pyramid of classification of quality of Italian wine. Uh, it was this work created a paradox. Paradoxical, uh, pardon me, paradoxical. Yeah, it's a very difficult word for an Italian. Anyway, paradoxical situation in which, in the same classification, vino da tavola, wine for the table, could be found very simple wines, sometimes, uh, you know, lower quality wine, cheaper quality wine, and also great wine that can easily, uh, you know, be considered one of the most beautiful example of the Italian winemaking that could be the envy of the most famous French chateau. So in order to avoid this possible misunderstanding, international critics enthusiastic about these new wines began to call the super Tus um, those kind of wines super Tuscan, just to distinguish them from other red wines of lower quality, which are you know, which are labeled table wine. And the term has become synonymous of, uh, you know, adventurers in the table so niche, uh, in innovative, I'm sorry, viticulture with producer experimenting new blends and new cultivation methods. And at the same time, uh, it has become synonymous of a style of wine which can go beyond tradition and are appreciated also at the international level. Anyway, uh, very important. Another very important moment in the development of Super Tuscany was the birth of the, um, you know, indication on geographical typical EGT. Uh, in order to solve these new paradoxes of Italian analogy, let's say it was introduced the classification of EGT, indicazione geografica tipica, uh, indication on um, geographical um, typica, which indicates a wine of a specific region. And, you know, there's no, let's say, rules to fall in this in this sense. But anyway, it can, let's say, um, we can say that this definition was created in order to recognize the quality of those wines uh, that, you know, are a little bit out of the box, produced in, in a way that could be considered out of the box. Um, of course, in case one wants to create a super Tuscan, however, it's not possible to simply mix Sangiovese with other grapes. What characterizes this wine uh, is also the history of their vineyards, their soil, and their territory, you know, where they were planted. In few words, we can say, uh, you know, mm, these kind of wines are anyway super representative of the terroir in which they are produced. And, um, you know, that's the that's the idea. You wanted, of course, to, to create. Uh, you want to try to create anyway with those kind of wines. Wines are really capable of amazing expression. So let's say that if you want to summarize the difference uh, between Super Tuscan and Chianti Classico, you can just say easily that you know Chianti Classico falls in category in a disciplinary and follow very specific and traditional rules. Super Tuscan are more free, are pure expression of winemaker um, art and idea of winemaking. And anyway, both are great quality uh, wines. Of course, we cannot say that Super Tuscan are better than Chianti Classico. And we're going to say Chianti Classico is better than Super Tuscan. It's just the personal preferences. As we always say, wine is something personal. And this is something that we need always to to remember. Anyway, this, of course, uh, uh, wine discussion about Super Tuscan was, uh, of course, very interesting for me because, anyway, it was nice to be able to go back and track a little bit down the history of uh, Super Tuscan wines and uh, also to, to highlight a little bit the, the differences between Chianti Classico and a Super Tuscan. So for today is everything. I hope, of course, you found this wine discussion uh, interesting. And we are going to uh, meet again the next week for another uh, episode of uh, Wine Thursday. And next time we're going to have a guest. So please don't miss these, uh, of course, uh, opportunity to, to meet very 
knowledgeable people that are coming, of course, to join us. And uh, of course, we, we, we are going to have, of course, a lot of um, very uh, important professional figures in, you know, as, as, as you as you understood, uh, uh, of course, last week, as I, as I told you before, we, we, we had Davide D'Alterio. And it was amazing to see, first of all, the passion that he has for, for a sommelier job. And, you know, it was amazing to listen to him, to, you know, all the great knowledge that he can pass you just, you know, in, in, uh, in a few minutes you are in just listening to him. You, you can learn so much. And, of course, it's, it's beautiful. So we're trying to, you know, do this new format just to uh, be able to learn, um, you know, uh, something more talking with those kind of people and, of course, to create also very valuable content for all of you. So thank you so much for today's everything. See you next time. Cheers.